So tucked underneath the ladder at the back of the fuel tank is this, which is your AdBlue filter. It needs to be replaced as per the book, but that just to show you where it is, just in case you do need to replace it itself. Same thing with all AdBlue. Please make sure that you don't use any organic style, so fuel, etc., or oil to lubricate the o-rings whatever if you do have to replace it because the system doesn't like that type of material so make sure that you do follow the book as to how to replace it so here we've got the fuel filter and the lift pump here if you do see any water inside the fuel inside the trap here do make sure you remove it as soon as possible we do have another trap on the back here and this is your little pump so you unscrew this and then pump it to prime the system if you do replace the filter or filters here, and maybe the ones up on the engine, a good idea is to always replace one filter, then bleed the system out, and then replace the next one, but run the machine in between each filter replacement. Uh, this will just help with trying to get all that air out of the system to start off with. When you've finished replacing or priming, please make sure you do push this home and screw it in tight like it is now. Um, otherwise this could end up coming undone and not be seated properly. Do have the tap there as well which you can turn on and off the fuel. So with the returns elevator and the clean ground elevator, the tension of the chains we need to do separately. So for the both tensions, if you have down the bottom here and you can just move the chain across the actual sprocket at the bottom, that's the perfect tension. Now for us to tension this particular chain, we need to go further up to the chain tension here, and here we did, we, this is how we tension this chain. So keep an eye on it, adjust it gently, keep an eye on the tension on the bottom while you're adjust, adjusting it. The other thing to not forget about is the little chain up the top um, for the bubble up auger up the top here. Don't forget about him as in lubrication wise and also for the tension itself. This is also seen in the book as well. So while we're still up the top, we do have the grease nipple up here, which greases the bubble up auger. And as we come down, we have these grease nipples here, which are obviously just 50 hour greasing. Don't forget the tensioner here. And then while we're on it, we have the variator itself for the drum drive. And these have obviously got their own grease nipples themselves. So when you do grease these ones, don't forget to go from maximum to minimum speed. So on this particular machine, we do have the drum speed reduction gearbox. So here, we, obviously it's got oil in it, so we do need to check whether it's got correct amount of oil. So there is here, there's one of the, the plugs to check it. Do have a look in the book what type of oil and also the position in which you check the oil level itself. And as we come down, we have a couple of tension here as well, and that's keeping the tension of the belt. Uh, for the drive itself. So here we've got another opening just like on the left hand side where we can get in to clean out any material that's sitting on top of the rotor cage and also on top of the um, prep trays underneath the rotor itself. So good idea is get in there, clean it out every, every day or so, um, make sure that there's no material lying about. While we're on the side here, also do check any belts and or bushes for wear um, because that will also help keep your machine running in tip-top condition. So with the returns elevator here, the tension for the actual elevator is done up here. So we have two bolts, one either side and then another bolt in the middle to jack this whole lot up to, to keep the chain tension correct. So this one, just like the clean grain elevator, it, you can just move the chain across the sprocket at the bottom of the elevator and that's the perfect tension. Don't forget this little chain here which drives the auger at the top. The tension itself yeah is done with this one and then we have a certain amount of deflection and that here yeah, you can find in the actual operator's manual. While we're up here the one thing I don't have on this machine is the eye here for having a look at the returns volume. So on the Takano, we can have a returns volume monitor. And this one, if you do have one, if you've got the little eye in here, open up the little cover and check the lenses and make sure the lenses aren't covered in dirt, etc. So especially if you're in a dirty crop, these do have a tendency of getting a little bit dirty. You will get 
something come up on the screen saying that returns can't see. So that's the time when we need to have a look at this one. As we go up over onto the grain tank, on the grain tank itself, we have on the right hand side, we have this cover here. Please make sure that that cover is closed. And then certainly at the end of the season, that is a good idea to pop that open like it is now to let any uh, rainwater, etc., escape from the actual grain tank itself. And also if you are cleaning, when you are cleaning your machine out at the end of the season, um, it's a good idea to have this one off. Don't forget the ones on the left hand side as well. So to gain access to the right hand side, we do have this arm here, pull it out. And that's where you can put your ladder so you can access the actual uh, right hand side there to clean your windows, etc. If you do want to clean the front windscreen, you put the feeder housing up, you can access it through the bar there, and then make sure that you do hold on to the bar just below the windscreen.